really do what we want for quadcopters, and I'm not really going to go into the difference between brush and brushless motors. It's mainly when you're looking for your motors, you go for brushless. They have multiple um, definitions that you, when you look up your motor on like Hobby King or something, you'll see that they have a KV rating, they have a LiPo cell rating, they have maximum amperage. Um, you'll also see um, dimensions for their hole spacing. So they'll give dimensions for this distance right here, this distance right here. So uh, when we're talking about frame design, if you are designing your frame, you really need to take into account these hole spacings because if you don't, you're not going to be able to mount your motors, you're not going to be able to fly because you won't have motors hard mounted. And then you'll definitely see other um, definitions such as the power, the resistance, the poles. Um, if you guys want to kind of go into those in the next slide. Alright, uh, so this is just something I put together from my personal experience messing around with quadcopters like um, the last couple of years and uh, figuring out what the different you know specs on the motors actually mean. And um, first KV, the obvious one when you're looking at the motors that you want, you uh, the higher um, high KV means you can uh, move smaller props, it's going to be moving a lot faster. It's you generally lower efficiency. Low KV is going to be for moving high props. You've got like, I don't know, 300 KV, 400 KV. It's going to be like 18 inch props versus like, um, the 2300 is the higher end for um, like the smaller ones like that. Um, power wattage is uh, on a general equations. It's related, I guess, to actual current, but um, generally high wattage, high amps is going to be um, less efficient. Low wattage, low amps is going to be you know, more efficient. Uh, the pull number in general uh, just relates to torque. More pull numbers or pulls, uh, more torque. Uh, maybe maybe it's kind of a little loose. It's um, in the motor, So, for example, like these, the motors on this mega, with our mega quad, those are doing 16 inch propellers, and those are 680 kV. Um, whereas, if you see in the X8 quad we have, those motors are doing 8 inch propellers, and those are that, those are 2200 kV. So, so I don't know if you guys can see all around the room, but basically, there's uh, the little spindles with copper. Those are the poles that we're talking about with uh, motors. And uh, this one in general is an 18 pole motor and spin like 14 inch props. And it varies sometimes between like 12 pole and 22. It's not like that. Torque. So, next slide. Yeah. Um, so those are kind of motor. Yeah. I was question previously. Uh, have you ever noticed uh, higher poles, higher efficiency? Is, is there a correlation between poles and efficiency? Um, I don't know. Generally, because you'll see it bounce all over if you look at. Uh, spec sheets for motors, I don't know, because you'll um, get different things like higher wattage or you know, higher amperage is going to vary all over the place. Um, yeah. If you notice a lot of those are related to efficiency, so it's probably balancing the what high efficiency specs you wanted versus what low efficiency specs you wanted. But yeah, poles mainly are for the prop size and the torque. So ESCs, um, you uh, want to get ESCs that match your motor. Um, so uh, ESCs have uh, three main uh, specs that you want to look at. The amperage rating is uh, probably the most uh, most important, the one that sticks out the most. As you can see on each ESC, the the biggest thing that sticks out is the 20 amp. Or 20, there's also 20 amp there. They go up to you know, 30 amp, all the way down. Very low amperages, um, ESCs. And uh, that amperage value, the summation of all four of your ESCs, or all eight of your ESCs, has to be below uh, that calculation we went through earlier with your batteries, the C value, and the um, milliamp hour. Then there's also a voltage range. You'll look at your ESC on the spec sheet, and they'll give you. Uh, um, the cells that it can take for batteries, and you don't want to exceed that. So if this ESC to the right, the after ESC says two cell to four cell, you don't want to be running that anything higher or lower than that because it could damage it. You could, it might work for a little bit, it might fall out of the sky. You know, you don't you want to really fit inside the specs of your electronics. 
Um, frequency, you want to go with frequency? Uh, frequency, uh, generally you can find speed controllers with lower frequency. Um, you want to make sure just anything multi rotor based is going to be above 400, so you don't really don't have to worry about it. But what that is talking about, when you have the speed controller, what, the way it's controlling the butter, I don't actually know too much about it myself, but it's setting a pulse, and that's why you have three wires, you don't have a positive and a negative. And the 400 hertz is like how many, you know, the speed at that pulse, the way that's setting through the wires, when it controls the arc the speed. Um, so you're saying 400 hertz is the general average? Is higher than that's that? the max. That's the oh, that's the max. Yeah. Okay, so nothing higher than that would be bad. So uh, no, anything higher than that would be fine. Like, uh, for example, this one I have is actually 600 hertz. Okay. Uh, but that's another topic with like flight controllers. Like flight controllers only operate at 400 hertz. So there's no point really at actually having the 600. Like I run this off of the 400. Okay. Theoretically, yeah, flight controller that can handle that. Yeah. So. so typically, it's it's not. Yeah. It's 400. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So there's. Purpose is to convert the DC current provided for the battery to AC current used by the motor. Is that correct? Yeah, that, that's the part I'm not too familiar on, but yeah. Okay. yeah. So if I had to guess, it's actually using a process called voltage modulation. Basically, it turns off the DC signal so fast it creates an AC. Right, right. Yep. Actually, what it does is each one of the poles uh, it sends a current to that, and then it sends an opposite current to one of the poles behind it. One of the poles creates yeah. magnetic field that pushes the other Yeah, pole. so that's like there's another side. And then, yeah, and then the other wire controls which one it doesn't change. It's pretty cool though. Like, <laughs> the precious motors and the magnets that actually spin it, it's really cool. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
ESCs. Battery eliminator circuit. Uh, that comes in uh, some ESCs, not all of them carry it, so that's something you want to look into, like whether you um, need a power supply for your flight controller or not. It, um, basically, supply is like uh, 5 volts with a small amperage, um, so that you don't you know, need an extra battery for all your additional components. So, those will typically provide power to the flight controller. Um, and if your ESC doesn't have a, B, a BEC, you can also buy a, a, a separate BEC online. It's not necessary, but it removes one component from your system. Alright, uh, these are just a couple of examples of uh, spec sheets. You know, people that actually have some. Uh, so, looking at this one, running like 5 inch propellers, you see it pulls out. Uh, 148 grams, it takes 3.3 amps. I think the recommended amperage on this one was like 8, so um, I ended up pulling up these guys. Uh, it's 10 amp max, 2 and 3 S. Um, so the, we'll email these slides to you, and I know it's a lot to take in right now, but when the idea is when you guys are doing this yourself, Pull up these slides and see what you are doing and if it matches with these examples and if you're doing it right. These are just wanting to give you resources to work on your own. Um, so these are another examples of more motors. If you're, you can just go look at these, check if you're doing it right. And then props. Uh, props are very basic and simple. Um, it's really what you prefer. Carbon fiber is generally more expensive. That's the main thing you want to look into. I think when I pull these pictures off, it was like, these guys were running like six bucks a pair versus like a dollar some change. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's really the main thing. These one, carbon fiber doesn't bend. Plastic, you get a lot of flex. And um, when, uh, we're talking generally minis at this point, but like, you're going to expect to break a lot. Balancing at this point is not really, I don't know, it doesn't mean a lot. So I just personally recommend buy a ton of plastic, and, uh, especially while you're pra like practicing. Yeah. Like that one, the car, I think, bought about 20 props for it. So, I mean, it needs four, so you can, you can expect you're going to crash, and every time you crash, you might hit a prop, it's going to break, you got to put a new one on. So, really plan for the future when you're doing this. Because the last thing you want to do is be flying and then break a prop and then have to wait two weeks for another one to ship in. So. Yeah, I'm assuming probably due to the aerodynamics of the prop, you can't like free print out a prop or do anything like that. Yeah. And they're, they're cheap. They're so cheap. Like as a dollar prop. Levi was saying that those two are like a dollar. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, it's not really necessary. Yeah, that's that side of the base. <laughs> yeah. So, where would you find good information to see what the maximum prop that you can use for a given other is? Oh, um. Well, that goes back to the examples. Like, um, here, I'll just do this one. Like, you look at like 22 volts. This is like a 6S. This, um, at this current rating, he's running a okay, 6S LiPo with a 7 inch um, propeller, and that's a 4 inch pitch. So, that's another thing you're looking at. Uh, so, yeah, you can use these because um, you can see the type and the size of the propeller, and it refers to, is this, this is diameter and that's pitch, correct? Yeah. So it, you can kind of use that as a template for right. what you're doing, um, so you can look at that, see what motors they're running, see what uh, ESCs are running, and see what propellers are running, okay. and what you kind of want. Right. Yeah. Um, props, uh, we kind of got that, so then uh, resources. These are resources that if you go to them, um, they have uh, quick uh, links that'll take you to motors, take you to ESCs, take you to batteries. They'll all be under um, si uh, control systems or propulsion topics like that. You'll be able to find them. And uh, it, in my experience, when I first started looking for motors, it was very overwhelming. I was, you bring up tons of pages of motors on motors on motors. Take it one at a time, make sure to refer to these slides, make sure you know what kind of what you're looking for before you just dive into the rabbit hole and just <laughs> go really deep. So 
And then also if you look at brands, those are kind of the brands you want to look for. Those ones are reliable, they um, are commonly used, there's a lot of forums, posts that are on them if you have, need help or anything. Um, so those are very good retailers and then good brands to look for. Uh, basically, this uh, website, if you guys want to check that out, it's a uh, RC calculator. Um, basically, it will make the chart for you, for, like from the last couple of slides, you can put in your info for your motor, your ESC, the prop size, and it will give you all your info as far as like flight time, like your current and everything. So that's a very useful website. Yeah. So, it will look like, which do you do? So you go with the eCalc, you go here, um, and then general, you put in battery cell, cell capacity, you'll put in um, motors, propellers, and then once you do all that, it'll spit out your flight time, it'll spit out your maximum thrust, it'll spit out what type of payload you can carry, um, it'll spit out everything you really need. It's not an exact science, it's not going to be if ECAL says I'm going to be flying seven minutes, I'm going to be flying seven minutes. There's going to be variation, but this is it. when you're planning your setup. This is a good way to see if you're really going to get what you want. So I would suggest once you have you set on your motors, you set on your ESCs, you set on your battery, your propellers, go here, plug everything in, and if you're seeing that you get like three minute flight time, you might want to change something up. Like maybe get a bigger battery, maybe get less pull from your motors, from your ESCs, kind of uh, do a balance there. Yeah. Now, generally for the coppers, we're wanting to eventually build your next turn. Yeah. What are some good, like, numbers to look for in the way of flight time, and things of that nature for a copter that size? What do you do for your Yeah, you know, uh, don't actually fly that small in general, but I would say, like, the smaller scale, higher KV, you get, do get shorter flight times, so, like, five to ten minutes would be, like, good. Yeah. Uh, so the large ones are like pushing you know, 15 to 20, but something that small is probably... So Carl has, Carl's that one, he can fly about 8 minutes on it, and we have like 5 lipos for it. So they're just little small ones, they're pretty cheap, they're going to cost about 8 bucks. And you can just get about 8 minutes per, per battery, and then small. just pop another one on it. Yeah. So, yeah, also for batteries, I'd suggest you get, get a lot of battery. Like, it might be a little expensive, I mean, eight, ten bucks for a small battery, but I mean, it's worth it. If you go out to the field and you bring one as opposed to four, it's five, as opposed to 25 minutes, like that. So, yeah. All right, well, that is, uh, I'm pretty sure that is everything on propulsion. Um, yeah. So, uh, thank you guys for coming. Next week, we're going to be going over flight controllers. Um, uh, all different types of flight controllers, and uh, I'd really suggest coming back because those are the biggest, those are definitely the biggest mystery to me. Um, <laughs> and we're going to talk about how they integrate with the rest of the system. So thank you guys for coming. If you would want to talk about, if you're not a member and you want to become a member, talk to me. And uh, also this little mini quad we have set up, so if you want to fly it.